Today we're going to look at how to get to the Mun and Back using MechCheb and the Alcor Pod. First bring up the MechCheb on the computer screen and then hit force roll and turn it to a 90 degrees angle. Then you're going to want to hit ascent guidance and then when you stage the autopilot will take over. So automatically it starts pitching to the east and um, as we raise higher and higher it will do a proper gravity turn until it gets to about a hundred or so kilometers above the surface. You don't have to hit circularize, but this is one way that you can do so. You can circularize at the next apoapsis. It's one easy key. But by using ascent guidance, it'll do it automatically. So we make sure that we're pointed towards our node and then we execute our maneuver. MechJeb knows to stage automatically, and so you don't have to worry about that. And once MechJeb finishes the maneuver, you are now in orbit. Next, we're going to be looking at how to plot a home and transfer using Astrogator. Once again, you must have this mod to use this. So we're going to click on there, and then we're going to choose the MUN. We're going to select that, and it's going to automatically plot a maneuver for us. So we can just go back into MechJab and hit Execute Maneuver, and we'll go ahead and take care of that when uh, it's ready for it. With Astrogator, it likes to plot in two maneuvers, uh, a correction bird midway through to kind of finalize everything. Uh, and then all you need to do is time warp until you're in the sphere of influence. So now that we are, we're going to go here and hit circularize at the next pairing abscess. And then once again, we're going to use MechJeb to execute the maneuver. Make sure that you're pointed towards the node, of course. So now that we're pointed towards the node and the maneuver has been plotted in the computer, it will automatically time warp us. And it will take care of the time warp as well as uh, burning at the correct time. So there we are. Once again, we're circularized. Um, now you can come up here on the Alcor pod and you can actually use these little dials to adjust the apoapsis and the periapsis. So we're going to go ahead and go for a 25 kilometer periapsis. And then we're going to execute the maneuver. And as you can see, our periapsis drops down to the correct height. I like having a lower uh, orbit when it comes to that. So now we're going to change our apoapsis to 30 degrees, or 30 kilometers. And press that green button and that will plot in the maneuver. Once again, you use MechJeb to execute the maneuver and then it will go automatically. So now we're gonna take a look at landing. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. The first way you could choose is land somewhere from MechJeb. What that will do is it will point itself retrograde and then once it's retrograde it will start firing and just choose wherever uh, the impact zone is. It doesn't have any kind of precision to it. As you can see here we are heading for a canyon uh, and the, that canyon has very high slopes on its walls. But all the maneuvers, all the firing here is done by MechJeb. It's automatic. I'm not taking care of any of that. Even the landing gear deploying was automatic. As you can see here, sometimes automatic isn't the best way to go about things. So our suicide burn countdown lowers and then we start to level itself out, but that was uh, too high of a slope and uh, disaster strikes. So just be careful when you choose to land somewhere. Um, you want to be somewhere flat, somewhere uh, that is a good landing spot. Yep, these kerbals are not going to make it. So let's go ahead and try that again. So now the better way to do this is to plot yourself your own landing spot. So I'm going to aim for this large crater right here. Right, somewhere around the middle of it. We're going to execute that maneuver. And it will, well, execute the maneuver. There you go, you can see our blue line was our trajectory green line is our current orbit and now they are aligned so now you can go ahead and hit land somewhere and once again the computer will take over the landing process but uh, first if you get your zone plotted out then you'll at least know where you're going to land the legs are extending suicide burn countdown is lowering 
our surface speed is coming down to a reasonable amount fairly quickly too. It's uh, very good about understanding how to suicide burn. And with that little effort at all and no input on my side, uh, we touch down. Nice and safe. And here we are on the mud. So we did a little science and we're ready to come home. So we're going to go ahead and hit ascent guidance one more time and uh, force roll negative 90. Or, excuse me, force roll positive 90. And that will take us east. And then once we hit uh, ascent guidance, the computer went ahead and took over. And it will be bringing us back to order. So as you can see here, it gets our height going, our apoapsis and then automatically it plots in a circularization burn. This is what I said earlier on in the beginning that you didn't need to circularize when you use ascent guidance because it takes care of it for you. And just like that, we are back in orbit. So now we're gonna use Astrogator once again to plot in uh, a course for Kerbin. And then we go ahead and execute that maneuver, that next node. We turn off force roll because we don't need it anymore. And when the appropriate time is done, it fires and it brings us back on a, a course back home. However, the uh, periapsis is within the atmosphere. In fact, it's actually on the ground. So we're gonna be coming in very fast if we take that maneuver. I typically like to use the circularize at periapsis, but if we do that, it's going to wait until we get to the apoapsis to execute the maneuver, and by that point, we'll have already crashed into the surface. So we plotted that little course correction there, and then now that we're above the surface, we can go ahead and circularize at the periapsis. Because our periapsis is 75 kilometers, so we have no worry about breaking through the atmosphere. If you don't have enough fuel, um, obviously do what you can if you need to aero break then you need to aero break but we had plenty of delta v left and so i wanted to just bring our apoapsis uh excuse me i wanted to bring our orbit to a nice stable orbit so it's a long burn because we were going extremely fast so now that we're in orbit we are going to plot our d final descent and we're going to go ahead and execute the node. And then once we're on a collision course with the planet, we are going to turn ourselves orbital out and stage our lower engine. Uh, and then we're also going to arm our parachutes. That is using real chute. We take a look at our certif not certified for atmospheric re-entry because this is the Alcor pod. But we have a heat shield that is larger than the, the width of it, so we should have no problem coming back through the atmosphere. So now all we have to do is sit and wait, make sure that we don't overheat, and then once we get low enough, our parachute will open up. And it's always important to set your parachute's deployment altitude uh, in the VAP. And there we go, the parachute has opened. And then the chute fully deploys and our speed will lower drastically. And then it's just a short trip down to the water and then splash down tells us that we are back home. So that is it. We went to the Mun and Back fully automated using MechJeb as well as the IVA part of the Alcor pod. Well, anyways, that's where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please consider giving me a like, drop me a comment, let me know if there's any other tutorials you'd like to see, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.